Our coverage begins in Washington with correspondent to Kedivan uh, Gorgistani. Kedivan, uh, first of all, on the heels of that, let's begin with the latest, which is a press conference taking place. The uh, mayor of Washington, D.C., and uh, the chief of police announcing more arrests. Yes, and uh, first, let's start with how uh, the uh, mayor of Washington uh, described uh, the people and uh, what happened uh, yesterday at uh, the Capitol building. She called it textbook terrorism. And then the grand total of arrests for that textbook terrorism, 68 people total announced by the D.C. police chief. Uh, among those 68, 48 were arrested on Capitol grounds. Just one person was actually a resident of the District of Columbia. And as you said earlier, uh, these were mostly arrests uh, made for violating the curfew that was implemented by the mayor of uh, Washington, D.C. And this has really uh, sparked a lot of anger uh, coming from uh, members of Congress, uh, from uh, people uh, in the United States, uh, all over social media, you're seeing immediate comparisons to what happened back in uh, the summer of 2020 during those protests over the killing of George Floyd. Uh, remember, 68 people arrested yesterday. Compare that to how many people were arrested on June 1st. 289 people arrested uh, back then. And uh, there are pictures all over social media, uh, side by side, of how law enforcement uh, dealt with the rioters attacking the U.S. Capitol, uh, coming in, vandalizing offices, trespassing, uh, compared to uh, those pictures of uh, how law enforcement cleared the area around Black Lives Matter Plaza for Donald Trump to come out and take that now infamous uh, picture in front of the church uh, holding a Bible. And so uh, there are a lot of questions as to why uh, law enforcement reacted the way it did, how long it took, and of course, why so a few people have so far been arrested, and most of them not even for trespassing, for attacking at the United States Capitol. Well, let's listen, uh, speaking moments ago, to the mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser. This should send a clear message to our nation and the world that despite actions of uh, an unhinged president and those uh, that believe the baseless conspiracies that have been peddled, um, by him uh, and, and by other elected officials, that the United States remains strong. Our democracy is prevailing, decency is prevailing, and hope uh, and change are on the horizon. A democracy remains strong, she says, Kedavan. Uh, nonetheless, uh, a lot of breaking news to go through here, including the fact that uh, effectively Facebook and Twitter are putting a gag on the U.S. president through Inauguration Day. Yes, uh, the first step that uh, those uh, tech companies had taken, uh, starting with uh, Twitter, for example, uh, was to uh, block uh, several of Donald Trump's tweets yesterday, those tweets uh, where he was uh, not uh, really condemning the violence and uh, mostly uh, either explaining, excusing, or uh, even celebrating uh, those people who were inside the United States Capitol, uh, calling them great patriots, uh, telling them that he uh, loved them. And so that was the first step. And then there was the suspension uh, with Twitter uh, saying that uh, Donald Trump had to uh, delete those uh, blocked tweets uh, before uh, he uh, could uh, retake control of his account. There was a suspension of uh, 12 hours. And now you're seeing uh, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg saying that uh, Donald Trump's account is uh, going to be uh, suspended indefinitely. Uh, so the tech companies really stepping in uh, to uh, block Donald Trump. Uh, Facebook saying that uh, they are simply protecting the United States uh, public from the president of uh, the United States. So uh, you're seeing really uh, some extraordinary steps uh, taken uh, by those tech companies.